everybody. Uh, we've got a small little tech team here. It's strange doing the show without the entire audience. So we are missing you guys. This is season 17, episode nine. And we have some very special guests tonight, Kevin Bracken and Jacqueline Henry. And so let's get started on a time with help, helping you to understand that you can lose weight even in this quarantine. So join us in welcoming these guys. So. Yeah. <laughs> Have a seat here. So um, I'm uh, truly truly honored you know to be here and to also start off with some incredible stats that have uh, been coming in our way so let me start with um, some people that have risen above all that's going on here you got Regina Smith's revolution class she has 17 participants that's lost 117 pounds in 14 weeks and then Terrell and Dana Cohen in their breakthrough class is 12 people, 74 pounds by week two. Uh, Chris Watterson's basic class and 95 people, 238 pounds down in six weeks. Jean Kurtz and Heather Sanchez in the change series. Uh, that's eight members and they've lost 84 pounds. Wow, and that's by week four, that, that's, that's a good set. Beth Smiley has a history of the One True God class. There's 14 members, 12 pounds by week three. Patricia Nessler, breakthrough, seven participants, 60 pounds down in nine weeks. And Francesca Kelly's revolution class, 45 people, 24 pounds, lost in four weeks. And that is amazing. Mm -hmm. Okay, so what happens when you scare everybody to death and so they run off to the grocery store and they stockpile three years worth of munchies and food in the house. And then you tell them to stay in the house and then that they really can't go out of the house unless they have to go out of the house, whatever that means. And then, you know, they can't go to the park and they can't go here and half the people are in apartments, very small situations, but then you are find yourself in a very stressful situation with everybody on top of each other and not being able to, to, to get out or being very worried about your finances and your school, your children's education, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, what does happen? Well, uh, we have found that they call it the, they call it the um, COVID, let's see, they, they call it the, the quarantine 15 or the COVID 19. And they are talking about the amount of pounds that people have gained in the last few weeks from being quarantined. So we've got the, the uh, quarantine 15 or the COVID-19. Oh. And yet, instead of gaining weight, like you, you'd probably feel very good had you just maintained your weight. But now let's take that information and know that a lot of people are going up and then some people are going down. Look at the contrast of what's going on with all these people that have been taking classes and the amount of weight loss. And you guys have the same story along of, we've got a couple of uh, guests coming on here on just video, but let's talk about what in the world is the difference, why they are, the contrast is so great. Instead of gaining 15 to 19, you've lost 13, and okay. you've lost 13. Thir thir both 13. So, uh, so uh, Jacqueline, let's start with you. Okay. Yes, this is so fun. I'm so excited to be here. And um, my, so I have a long history and just with way down. And um, I do know that God has shown me over the years that weight is ingrained in my heart is the one thing I can use as a barometer for my relationship with God. And so just over the years, um, going through, you know, like ebbs and flows, unfortunately, of just really relying on God and trusting in Him and, you know, really having my weight at where it needs to be. And then um, just whenever I'm off, that's just the one thing that comes on the fastest or that's external and I can see or feel the most. So at, in about, so January of this year, I was in one of those, I was feeling like, 
you know, my heart just felt heavy and I hadn't been getting on the scale. I didn't want to really get on the scale because I knew that it was up. I didn't know how much it was going to be up, but I decided to get on the scale and it was up more than I expected. And so I immediately reached out to um, my accountability partner and I've just made Elizabeth my accountability partner. <laughs> so I, I reached out to her and I said, oh my goodness, I'm up this certain number. And um, you know, she came back and she was super encouraging. She's like, you can have that off so fast. Like just, you know, growl to growl, hunger and fullness. Um, and so I felt in, in that too, just with a heavy heart, I felt just in that time I was having, I had answered or I had prayers that I was specifically praying about that I just felt like we're not getting answered or I, I wasn't getting answers for God on, not really like I'm praying for something that didn't happen, mainly like I was praying to seek God and I just had no clear direction. It was like, I just didn't feel like I could be led by God. And um, so that was really discouraging at that time. And then um, just like, just some things with, you know, my girls, I just felt like there was more frustration. I just wasn't handling parenting as well as I, you know, needed to, and so just jumping on the scale and seeing, okay, yep, that's it. Like, it's the lack of connection. It's the lack of connection with God. And so um, I, around that time, I was like, I'm getting back in. I am just, I am going all for this, and I don't care about the weight at all. It was just like, I, I literally don't care, God, if you take one pound off my body. I just want to feel you. I just want to feel you again. I just want to feel you know, that you're talking to me. And then immediately hear your voice from Way Down Basics that the growl is God talking to you. And, um, you know, that was, and that was exciting too because for a while I'm like, I don't even, I don't, you know, I was praying these prayers and I didn't feel like God was answering or giving me signs. So I'm thinking God isn't talking to me. But then I'm just like, no, you know, I, Gwen, you know, it's the growl. The growl is God's voice. And so just getting it simple instead of trying to fix like everything going on in my life right then, you know, I just was just the growl. And so really got into that. And then right around that time, our fellowship group started a revolution class with the women. And so that class, I hadn't taken it in a couple years and it's all about the growl. It's all about getting rid of panic, getting rid of gimmicks and just, you know, hunger and fullness is fast enough. Get off, you know, get a starting number, but get off the scale. Like, I, I would I would be so, I was getting so controlling. I'd say it was over the past two years that I really started stru like struggling with it. Maybe you couldn't tell, you know, cause I was just like really just gritting my teeth, like, you know, the hard way, not gritting my teeth for God, but just like to try to control what was going on. And so um, I was weighing like every day, a couple times a day, because if I did not know the number, I didn't know how to eat for that day. Yeah. Like if the, if the number was up, okay, I'm skipping two meals. If the number was down, oh great, I can eat a little extra today. It was just like, it was so controlling. Yeah. So just realizing that, 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 that the scale had just become and the number had become an idol. And so um, laying or that more down. like a God. They yeah, say an God. idol, but it's more like, it's the voice you're listening to. Yes. Right, I wanna make that point. Well, yes. yes, thank okay. you. Um, I was not right. And so, um, I, so revolution, just going in there and going through that. And so that was in January. And then, um, so we just finished our first round. We started again, but I lost 13 pounds through that. And I'm so grateful. I just feel like God was preparing my heart for this quarantine time because it truly was, it wasn't about weight loss. It was just about connecting back to God. And I feel like there's so many resources I could say right now because we have slowed down, slowed down so much. And um, like we've been reading the One True God book with our girls and just trying and teaching them. It, it's so beautiful how they can start understanding at such a young age, they're three and four. And they <laughs> like are understanding, you know, um, just like shutting the door to sin and there's two voices, you know, one. You sent a video and I, I was, couldn't believe your youngest was saying, um, and this is good and this is bad. So it's good if you do this and it's good for, I mean, it was the cutest thing. I just went, she knows good from evil at that age. Well, and, and how old is she? She's three. Yeah. And Juliet is four. So, um, but they do. And, and um, so we, uh, that resource and talking about connecting. So I'm getting to talk to them about, and then also taking it inward, like 
Now, if you don't obey mommy, you're, you're disconnecting from God, you know, yeah. and you can't disconnect from God. And just same for me, like how you would talk about how the Satan would experiment with those disconnections till, you know, he would think like, oh, I'm doing good. I'll just disconnect here and I'll disconnect here. And then all of a sudden, like he's just completely disconnected. Right. You can't disconnect when you want right. to. Right. That's why authority line is so huge because, you know, when you pull away, you know, or you, you know, uh, the, I guess children back talking their parents or back talking the teachers or whatever it is, or your leaders or your boss. I mean, it's, it's pulling that connection away. Yes. So it's huge. Yes. So thank you so much for all the resources. And but oh, I, I felt like God just prepared. I, I would, I, I, I probably lost like eight or I'm, I probably lost most of it right before quarantine, but maybe like the last five during the quarantine. But I'm just so grateful because I know like I can pray to God now and I can be spirit led and I can be connected. You know, I, I don't have to worry like, I gotta go to the grocery store and find toilet paper. Like I'm gonna go to 10 stores before. I just like pray and God will lead me to the one store and then they'll come over the intercom and be like, Kroger customers, we just got a small shipment of toilet paper, you know, at the aisle 16. And you know, it's like, I just feel like I'm living, I mean, it's so sweet. And I know that God led me there, you know? Uh, yeah, and, absolutely. And I'm just so grateful. I, I would be panicking. I, would, I wouldn't know what to do. I wouldn't know what to do with my, my two young kids, like how to keep them entertained. And oh my goodness, what am I gonna do with all this free time? And it's been so peaceful and it's been refining, and, but I'm so grateful for it. And now I just, I just feel like, I just feel so peaceful and it's just joyful. And I just like, there have been no big arguments in the house or frustration. Like I'm having the sweetest time with my husband at home and, um, and just with our girls. And it's just, it's been, it's actually been really fun. I do miss all of my friends. I miss being here. I miss being surrounded by the saints. That is no, no doubt. But I am, I'm having, we're having just a very sweet time together. And just the very last thing is, I just felt this um, really strong feeling in my heart that if I don't, if I don't take right now, like all the way, this time where God has really allowed us to slow down. If I don't take this all the way with my parenting, if I don't take this all the way with, with you know, me and just being a submissive wife, if I, if I don't take this all the way with the food and the connection with God, like, I, I don't think I ever would. I really don't. Like, if you God, can't do it now. Yes. Right. I just felt yeah. like this is scary. If I can't get this now, I, I don't think I ever will. So that was another thing that really, really um, got me going. But. That's yes. beautiful. So. Okay, so that just segues right into Kevin's testimony because uh, he's going to reinforce that it was actually the quarantine that helped him to connect, to slow down enough to, to get it all right. So um, Kevin, t let's t hear your story. Yes, ma'am. I just want to thank you for the resources and praise God for the, all the leadings that you get for that. Thank you, Kevin. Um, it, it was definitely the quarantine. We were able to slow down and be able to actually listen for the growl, like you were saying. Um, it, before, with life just being so busy and everything else, that's the excuse I was using all the time. That I would listen to tapes once or listen to a, a web, webcast or whatever it was. We'd do it once, then done. Now, with everything slowing down, I was able to multiple times, play in the background, that kind of thing. And then it would actually seed my, my head and my heart to know whether I should you know, be eating this just because I have time to eat it or if I'm actually hungry. So I'd be looking for the growl. Um, and through that time, I was able to just, I actually was surprised by it. I was looking down at the scale and noticed that I had lost some weight. And it just kept coming off. And it was the actual, during the quarantine time, able to slow down and just able to keep listening and keep filling my head with the truth. Sam, you, you took the revolution class, right? Or is it, yeah, was it's, it the, I think it was my second or third time taking the revolution class, but this is the first time I truly um, got into it and actually opened the homework up. Like, I, I think I mean the first time, I will admit it that I took the class and never once even opened the homework. Um, so I was, this time I was like, there's no reason not to. I mean, we have this time at home, we're gonna view it as a family. Um, it, we, we actually sit there when we do the 
we do Zoom meetings now for our revolution class, we have the kids sit with us too. So they're sitting there with it watching us. You know, half the time they're not all the way into it, but they're still hearing parts of it. Oh, you know, sure. In the background, that kind of stuff. Like even when I'm in my office doing my schoolwork, I'm playing a revolution class in the background sometimes. So we're able to hear it multiple times. So um, you were telling me earlier that um, how it all started off with you was you were in the military and you were actually underweight and then you um, joined uh, the church that it, it got rid of this stress uh, on, your, on you and you were able to get up to your right weight and then over the years you didn't even really know that you had put weight back on and you had and so this time, like you said, was helping you to just concentrate and I just, I think it's incredible. I, I just love it if the, the men hear this because I think a lot of times that there will be a tendency that for people to say, well, you know, I'm, I know this or I've got it. I've heard it once. I've, you know, and they, it, you forget that the whole thing is reprogramming and it's reprogram in your mind. Like you said, planting a seed. Yes, yeah, so I just want to say that you hit it nail on the head right there where you said it, it was, from my personal opinion and my viewpoint is, I heard it once, I've got it, I'm done. That's not true. I, hearing it over and over again, no matter what it is, it's, it's going to actually take seat in your heart to begin with and your head. So everything you do is going to be going back towards it, you know, reminding you of what the procedures are or wait for the growl or whatever it happens to be. And you know, the, the early Christians, they would sit around and they would read the apostles' letters, which were their written documents, over and over and over and over. And then they would recopy them, and then they would cir you know, circulate it. And so, in journaling it, you know, writing down the words, writing down, I mean, it doesn't hurt. And then, like you say, we put it into our mind, and then it comes out through the actions, and you lost 13 pounds. Yes, ma'am, since the quarantine started. That is awesome. Yes, praise God, and just thank you for all the resources. Well, I, I do thank God for all the resources, and I will say he has made that very, very easy for me. If I just open up the laptop and get going, then, then it comes. So mm -hmm. I, I, do, I do have to thank God for all of that being um, interestingly as maybe hyperactive as people think I am or as social as they think I am. I would find that it's a, it's a great joy to get to the middle of the night or the peace times to do it because it's a, it's a drive inside. Uh, okay, so we're gonna, we're gonna go to a video. We've got a video of someone who has actually lost an enormous amount of weight to start with, but then felt it creeping back on. We're gonna watch uh, Sherry Lomas. Hi everybody, I'm Sherry Lomas and I started way down in 1997 and I've lost 150 pounds and had it off for 23 years. And in the last year, I have let about 25 pounds creep back on. And I was totally miserable um, in every way. And I knew what to do and I made a choice. I repented and I took personal responsibility I reached out to one of our leaders. Um, I got in a class and have accountability with the class. Um, I got all the tools that I needed, um, the Way Down TV, um, the Essentials Weight Loss class package, uh, got involved, started a re we started a revolution class in mid-January. And um, anyway, it's been awesome. Um, I've got I've lost about 23 pounds. I've got 10-ish more to go. And um, anyway, it's been amazing. Uh, you can be in this quarantine and still lose weight. We started our class mid-January, um, and I'm so thankful that we were already going full steam ahead um, when the quarantine hit. And, um, and when the quarantine did hit, it was like I did not want to be have anything bring me down. And so I was really thankful that we had the class going. Um, there have been so many blessings from, from this. Um, I have more love for God. Um, I'm in this class with my sweet daughter-in-law, Brooke, and we have just an amazing um, sweet relationship and accountability with each other that I absolutely love. Um, 
the weight loss. Um, I feel like my mind is uh, renewed. Um, I feel like I've completely um, freed from lies and um, gimmick thinking. Um, just keeping it simple, um, growl to growl, and um, just persevering, and just so much uh, peace and joy. Oh, that's beautiful. Isn't that great? 23 awesome. pounds. Sherry, that is awesome. An awesome testimony, and thank you for uh, sending that along our way. So, talking about slowing down, David, I mean, you've got a, well, a, a yeah, very I'll busy you, life. I don't know I, if you felt were, slow. <laughs> there are two, two words that running through my head as everyone was talking, uh, inspired by what all of you said. Uh, authority and creativity. Gwen, you mentioned authority early on. And the further you get into this ministry or, or into this, these teachings, all these resources that you put together, that God's led, led you to put together, the easier it can be if you don't watch your guard is to lose sight of that urgency that you felt in the beginning. When you first lost the weight, when you first laid down those strongholds, for the men when you first stopped lusting or overspending or all of them, all of them, all, all of them just apply equally as much as weight does. But the further you get into it, you would think, okay, well, you're a more seasoned veteran. It sh this should get easier and easier. If you have the right mindset, it can get easier and easier to stay connected to God. And it becomes, like you've said many times, Gwen, to where your will and his will are lined up so much that it becomes second nature. In theory, that's what is supposed to happen. And that's what hap that's what has to happen for us to make it to the to eternity with God but if you lose sight of that urgency and you approach the relationship with God or eating or whatever the strongholds have been and it becomes casual and your relationship with your authorities if it becomes more casual and you just you feel a little too comfortable um, acting a certain way or speaking a certain way or eating a certain way and you just to your point Jacqueline you, you find that you can't feel, you use the word can't feel God anymore. And so just to be reminded, and, and I think this quarantine has done it too, it's put, put us in a situation where at the, at the request of our nation's leadership, never happened before in our lifetime, we've had to honor this and honor their requests and we have done everything to, to do that here. This is an empty sanctuary, as much as we wanna be together, we're honoring our authorities. And as much as we want to get back together. And so the same can happen with this message. And with the, you lose how anointed it is. You forget that these are words from the heavens. This is not just any book that I'm reading. History of the love of God. This is not just a book that's one of millions printed in the world right now. This contains the keys to eternal life. This leads us back to scripture. All these words are unified. And so when you, if you keep that mindset that what I'm participating in, what I'm watching tonight, what I'm listening to from this, this teacher and this author is anointed, it's, a, it's anointed, then you want to stay connected with all the words that come from that teaching. It pulls you back into the scriptures. It pulls you back into the classes. And so a quarantine, instead of, as you referenced, Gwen, instead of you know, 13 or 19 pounds up, we have these kind of results because you guys dug in and got reconnected with the authority as these words have come out. And the other thing was creativity. When you were talking about parenting and we've got older kids, Gwen's got older kids, we've got grandkids now, you guys have got younger and younger kids and you, you talked about keeping your girls busy and keeping them you know, focused and, and, and as you're spending a lot more time together. And I found that that's been exciting for our family. It has, don't get me wrong, we, there's never a time where we would wanna miss an opportunity to gather here in the sanctuary with the saints and have be around hundreds and hundreds of people. Of course, that goes without saying. But it's been these last few weeks, again, a blessing in disguise. It's the only time because two of our, our two oldest daughters are now married to a fabulous young men in this church, each has a grandson. We've all been in the same room together. We've, we've never been able to do that our entire lives we're, because we're all scattered in different directions. And so the, the creativity using that word God kind of allowing us to all be kind of forced into it. We have read more. We've had more prayer time. We've gotten to experience the webcast together in one room, worshiping together in one room. We've learned new games to play together. We've laughed more. We've prayed more. Um, it's, it's the closest we've been since our girls started getting married, getting married and moving out of the houses, which is what, what you do. You marry, you move out of the house. It, this, this God allowed time 
has allowed for us to get creative and have more fun together and to be closer and to be tighter and to be accountable to one another. And so once again, it, and I guess the last thing I'll say um, would be, and I'll, I love the way Gwen explains the eating experience. And um, at the end of a day, you know, she's talked about your spirit, your spirit flesh. Did you have a spirit day or flesh day? I think that goes all the way back to way down advance, 2001. Um, a, 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 an additional spin on that is at the end of your day, let's just say as it goes with your eating, like we've been talking about tonight, when you lay your head on the pillow, who got the glory for how you ate that day? You either gave God the glory or Satan got the glory. So who won? Who's cheering as your head hits the pillow? And you've talked about picturing your life, even if it's just you in front of that plate of food as being in an arena. You talked about that too, where all the heavens are watching and all of Satan and his allies are watching. And how, how you conduct yourself decides who cheers at the end of the day. And that has stuck with me all these years. So all these word pictures, all these analogies, all these stories, the, this anointed way that God's given Gwen for expressing it, go back and just, if you wanna indulge in something, indulge in that. Indulge in the scriptures, indulge in these videos, these seminars, indulge in these writings because they're the only thing you can indulge in. Righteousness is the only thing you can indulge in that is actually good at the end of the day. Indulging in anything else isn't just indulgence. Indulging in this is, to your point, connecting you with God. And um, so I would take you back to the history of the, of the one true God, history of the love of God, uh, God-fearing families, in addition to all the resources you guys have talked about. It's been a beautiful time for our family. We're all ready to get back together. But again, what Satan has intended for chaos, God's gonna, it's gonna be good for us. Yes, it was beautiful. It's, it's been beautiful. So I wanted to um, just, you know, to, to pretty much wrap up what I'm just dying to get out and say too, that just, I mean, beautifully said David, Jacqueline, Kevin, uh, is that why, why is it that diets don't work? Why is it that your gimmicks don't work? Why are these people, you know, struggling why do you like do good all day, but you mess up at night? What, what, what is that? And the, the answer is strictly that if you, the, the whole thing's about the spirit being connected to God. Okay, so if you have a gimmick and your gimmick is, I'm gonna skip that, and I'm gonna do this, and you know, you make all your own plans, then you're not, you're not asking God. So you're your own boss, you're your own God. And along with you would be the scales. The scale, you get on the scales, the scales then says you're up. Okay, then my decisions will be this. So there's that as a, as a resource and then your own head as a resource. Who's left out of this? God. And so when, you are, when you're doing that, here, here's the problem, here's the problem. You're, why, why, what happened with the COVID, the quarantine 15, the COVID 19? You've gone up 15 or you've gone up 19 pounds and some people have gone up even more. You know, some people have really, really stuck with all that food in the house and can't get out and you've got piles of it because you overbought because you were afraid of not having enough food. I saw the grocery store shelves. They were wiped out. I never had one fear. I didn't worry about it. I knew that there was enough, uh, you know, uh, stored energy on my body that I could go quite a while before I was something really was going to be bad happen to me. And so I, I know that I, I don't have a fear of that. But when you have that fear, and then you add that stress on there, all this overeating. But if you had stayed in the classes, why are the classes, the classes are pointing you back to one authority, one God. There is one God. I love that song from Michael Shamblin, you know, there's just one God, which really is the theme behind this whole ministry that, that started, that there's one voice instead of a lot of voices. There's one voice. And this voice comes in through these you know, godly authorities and through, you know, spouses and through parents to the children, but it's also coming in through this, this uh, when the stomach growls, you eat. And when it's full, 
you stop. So whose voice are you listening to there then? Well, you're not listening to yours because your head says it's on the plate. It looks good. I haven't had that food in a long time. It's hot. Uh, you know, somebody else may eat it. I better eat it now. Those are the voices you can't listen to. You listen to one voice, and that voice is saying, the body says full, the hunger mechanism's turned off, you're not hungry, and stop. You don't eat until that voice, and it's of course coming through that growl, to eat. All the other voices are turned off, but for those that will continue to want to be their own decision maker in everything, They'll do it with their, uh, if it's a wife, they'll, they'll trump their husband with decisions because they want to listen to their voice instead of God's voice. Uh, with those that refuse to wait for you know, God to tell you to eat, then they, they're using their own voice, their own head, their own decisions. They are the God. They're using the scale as a God to tell them they may look in the mirror even and say the mirror says, looks like I've lost a little bit, I can eat more today. Um, they use the clock. The clock can be their voice. Uh, they can use the smell of what's cooking and that's the voice. There's so many voices out there that you become, uh, besides you know, what you gain here uh, during this quarantine, there's no telling where it's gonna go where it's gonna end until you end the voices. You end the voices of the wrong authorities and you get the voice of the right authority. And when you get the voice of the right authority, what's wild, what's completely wild, but completely makes sense. If you were the God of the universe, you're trying to get people to connect with you into your voice. And when you connect to God's voice, it's blessed. That's, that, that's, that's exactly what happens. In fact, it's not gonna be just blessed. Forget about just the blessings, you know, that, that comes from this. You've lost weight, feels good, all that kind of stuff. It's not just that. It's life and death. That's how deep it goes. It says in Romans 8, those who live according to the sinful nature have their minds set on what that nature desires, what, what, what you want, okay? And, but those who live according with the Spirit, with God, have their minds set on what that Spirit desires, what it wants. It doesn't hear any other voices. Verse 6, the mind of the sinful man is death. But the mind controlled by the Spirit is life and peace. It's life and it's peace can you not feel it? You can feel it when you're connected to that authority. And then, you know, I'm, th I'm thinking if people could just stop getting up and doing what they think they want, but to tune in to God. And you tune in, of course, through, there's all kind of, it, God speaks to you first one way and then another. But obviously, Never um, discount the authorities above you. Do not dis ever discount, you know, the body telling you when to sleep, when it's thirsty, when it's hungry, when it's sick. Don't override it. You listen. It's God's body. It's what he wants. And we're all trying to connect to this God of the universe. Ah, because you get extra blessings. No, it's beyond that. Guys, this is not a diet program. This is not about losing weight. This is about life and death. And it's not just physical, it's spiritual. And that's why we are all gonna keep going for it. What did they say tonight? They said the quarantine, which I do believe that there's gonna be some changes in families just like yours. People are closer, people have changed their lifestyle because of this quarantine. God said, hold on globally, hold on. I believe, I, I, there's no doubt that God, because there's way too many different countries that were, were thinking that this was an answer, which was no answer really, but hey, hey, it's what happened. 
and they were all in agreement like okay so I do believe that God does have God is over these and I do believe that God's trying to get through to everybody Kevin Jacqueline Sherry, God got through to you and all these others with their classes. Look at the numbers that we read out tonight. God's getting through, and that's a small amount. In the name of Jesus Christ, may, may the world, may the world slow down, get on their knees, cry out like Jacqueline did. God, I just want you again. And he started answering. And so may, may everyone take advantage of that. Praise God. It is not just for one person or special people. If you go to God, you too will overcome, even during a quarantine. Let's turn, turn these pounds that you've gained around and let's follow God who gives life. Amen. Amen. Thank you for joining us. You Thank you. Can Sing for each.